this is life. Um, sorry, I'm having a bit of some, having some technical issues. whether I am live on Instagram. Oh no. Just bear, with, bear with me whilst I have some uh, technical complaints on Instagram. This might be it. Okay, I think I might be live now. Um, so hi everyone. Apologies for the slightly late start. I'm outside uh, because I'm on a break from my uh, job, which is what I do and I'm not in theatre. Um, I'm just going to wait. seconds um i hope the wind isn't too bad um because it's not it's not here but you know sometimes when you're online it's just like deafening if there's any outside noise so i apologize in advance if that is a problem okay so we are live on both um so i am gonna get started and then if anyone like joins later then just ask a question. Um, so my name is Amber Sinclair Case. I am uh, one of the current TRDs at the King's Head. Um, I am originally from Scotland and that's where I am now because of um, Covid but normally I am based in London. Um, I trained as a musical theatre performer and then I realised about halfway through that I wanted to be a director and a writer, uh, which is what I do now. And uh, I am also an incoming PhD student uh, that I will be beginning in 20, September 2021, which is very exciting. Um, so the King's Head kind of gave me like my first, I moved up to London and then was lucky enough to come onto the TRD scheme. So they've pretty much been like, my babysitters since I moved to London because I came from a very small town and I didn't expect London to be as big and scary as I it actually was when I moved in July 2018 and then uh, very soon after that I was put on my first show which was at the Arcola Theatre uh, which was Annabella Ema and I had the best time um, so the type of work that I am really interested in is anything that amplifies um, marginalized communities but I'm really interested in the uh, like themes of displacement within black communities and um, LGBTQ plus narratives specifically like international where um, it's still criminalized to be part of the LGBTQ plus community as well as intersectionality and how uh, things like blackness and queerness can work in tandem with each other and what kind of parts of an identity have to be suppressed in order to fit in. Um, that's something that's quite personal to me. I am uh, half Jamaican and um, it's obviously illegal to be part of the LGBTQ plus community in Jamaica. Um, and I am, so uh, coming out to my uh, dad's side of the family was very interesting. And that's always been kind of something that have been at war at. It's really only in the past year that I have started to feel comfortable in discussing uh, my sexuality as well as my blackness. So that is where my work, that is where my work kind of circulates. Um, I'm also really passionate about amplifying trans narratives um, and specifically black trans narratives um, because I I mean, I'm sure everyone that I'm speaking to knows how vulnerable that community is in terms of representation in theatre. Um, and also, and when we place stories that show positive trans narratives uh, without 
their transness being rooted in trauma. I think that that is one of the next steps that we should be taking if we want to include everyone and be as inclusive as our theatre industry wants to be. Um, so my day-to-day -day work life uh, at the moment I'm working in a seafood cafe which you can see the bones of back here just a little tour um, and I am obviously living in Scotland and I am also traveling down to London at different points of the month uh, which is a bit tiring uh, to teach a module that I wrote called Diversifying Musical Theatre. So I'm currently teaching that in two institutions and I'm hoping uh, that over the next year or so I can reach out to more places and it basically just kind of encompasses the type of work that I want to make. It's talking about forgotten and erased histories um, that encompass uh, like black, other ethnic minorities, um, LGBTQ plus people, uh, it talks about ableism and uh, people that are less able-bodied and how those how um, those characters are represented in musical theatre. But anyway, uh, to get on to what I'm going to be speaking about today, I will be discussing Mules by Winsome Pinnock, which I discovered in um, January of this year and actually developed a pitch for it then. Um, and since I've just kind of it's been like mulling over and I really want to do it at some point I just really love the play I mean Winston Pinnock is as all of the reviews say like one of the best black British female playwrights um and I think that this play is very telling of that she has written a piece of work that is so transnational and it just crosses it crosses so many borders both uh, like physically, emotionally, um, and the societal constraints um, within that. But I will get on more into that in a second. I'm just going to read what the plot is uh, depicted as because it's quite um, difficult to understand if you've not read it. Um, so it was first performed in 1996 and uh, it was a co-production between Clean Break Theatre Company and uh, the Royal Court Theatre Upstairs. It was directed by Roxana Silbert and it had three actresses playing uh, 12 characters in the original. So going into the plot, um, quote, in a luxury three sleek young black women are panicking. They are high-class mules or drug couriers and one of their colleagues has absconded with the dope. If they don't effect a delivery in Amsterdam that day then they're done for. I can't lose this job, I can't do anything else. Can you see me working in Woolworths? Asks the terrified Sammy who has risen above her humble origins by carrying drugs for a living and now spends her earnings on works of art. So I'm also just going to quickly go over the characters. Um, I think that if I do this now, then it'll be less confusing when I, if I jump around and just mention characters that you don't know exist. So uh, there's Ali, who is a teen runaway. Lou and Lila, who are sisters and they're Jamaican. There's Bridie, who is the drug courier and she's American. Uh, there's Rog and Sammy, who are Bridie's colleagues, they're both English. Uh, Pepper, who's in her 30s, Piglet, who's in her 20s, and Olu, who is a Nigerian illegal immigrant. And then there's Bad Girl 1 and 2, and Ro, Ro who's Ali's landlady. So one of the reviews from the original production was costume changes for the three actors and of course because we as creatives love a challenge that was the first thing that I kind of picked up on um, because Winsome in her gorgeously lyrical writing um, has given very little opportunity for um, the actors or the creative team to differentiate between Jamaica and London it, it like it flits between a hotel room in London to the like co like cotton fields type image in Jamaica, um, and it's it's scene one, scene two. Um, so that was a challenge that I definitely thought was going to be the first kind of obstacle um, when attacking this piece, um, and I think that as part of my Jamaican heritage and me just kind of rediscovering that I've been looking a lot at the LGBTQ plus community over there and it is still criminalized to be part of the LGBTQ plus community which I've already mentioned um but I think that the transnational aspect of this piece would allow me to kind of tap into that it's originally written for three cis uh female 
Um, but I really wanted to kind of turn that on its head because I think that the the writing and the production of the different characters is is something that we could explore. Um, so I was looking at some statistics and I realised that 51% of uh, trans women in Jamaica live knowingly with HIV but refuse to go and get treatment because they're scared of being outed or because their, sa their safety is at risk, basically. Um, and I think that that just really struck me and I feel like I was being a little bit ignorant because I live in a bubble and everyone that I associate with, everyone that my social media is very inclusive and welcoming and that had never really crossed my mind. Um, and I thought that that would be a really good stake to add. Um, so I decided to have three uh, trans women portraying these 12 characters um, and that kind of is mainly because my main concept is going to be discussing the production and um, construction of an identity and how identities can be just can be constructed apologies um, when the societal constraints are like just in someone's ear I'm really interested in the idea of femininity and how trans women have to conform to a certain like a certain level of femininity in order to be accepted i think it's ridiculous and i'm sure you all do as well um and i think that by using the by using the production of identity at the core of the concept um it lends itself to a really communal experience with the audience um, to create these identities with these actors and one of my main things in a rehearsal room is we train as actors for 18 plus years and then we get into a room with a director we're not allowed an opinion and that just really doesn't sit well with me um, probably because I'm gobby but anyway um, so yeah I, I really want this to be a collaborative experience and that's something that will be discussed and worked through and just kind of found in the rehearsal room with these actors because also I am uh, not a trans woman so it's not you know I can I can scream and shout about how much I think that this should be done and this should be done but it's not my experience and I don't want to ever be in a situation where I make someone feel uncomfortable because I'm trying to project an idea on them that they've felt but Anyway, so my setting is in the round. Um, my original was to have a dilapidated hotel room bed just sitting in the centre and the entire stage is covered in dust. Um, and this is kind of a symbol of a fractured identity and just the dust is kind of like all of the secrets that they've, that they've hid away. Um, and... I think that a hotel room bed is the easiest way to kind of have a place of centre within the piece um, and the actors will each have their own box or their own station uh, should we say and that's where they will create create their identities so as they become the different characters as an example um so she's the ringleader and she was portrayed by the queen claire e perkins in the original production um but she is she is in it quite a lot and uh, she only switches between four characters only i say only as if it's easy but um so for to kind of um to show that she is becoming bridey i had an idea of perhaps she puts on lipstick um which is kind of playing into the the ideals of femininity but is also something that's quite sultry and intimate and personal you might do it to feel a little bit more confident and that's what bridie needs to do um so when bridie uh is becomes another one of her characters uh, so she portrays bad girl two as well um i really would like the actors identities to be still part of them so instead of like taking a wipe and going off stage it would be wiped across her face so by the end of it she is covered in all of these different faces but still hasn't really found herself um, and i think that that's something that would be definitely worked out in the rehearsal room but is a thread that i want to feed in throughout the entire thing what what makes a trans woman a woman what part 
of that like what part of your physical identity makes you yourself and why why does they in general feel like they can project an idea onto someone when they're not in their head um yeah i think it's it's definitely like identity and the politics surrounding that is something that is quite personal to me um and it's something that i'm still working through because you know i mean we we're, we're always growing we're always learning and i feel like this play is perfect in kind of reaching in to the like issues around like drug smuggling within women but also it's brilliant to show the dangers and the stakes of actually of being part of the lgbtq plus community in jamaica or in a country where it is to be yourself and illegal to exist as yourself um and just going back to like the visual image of a trans woman that that was kind of where the concept began like what does what does that mean does it change over time uh, how much does the media contribute to the ideals of femininity and how and what pressures are subsequently faced by by women or trans women of color when not only is their transness constantly under scrutiny from everyone around them but also their their race and their ethnicity and their heritage so and that kind of like intersection is just it's just re I think it just really lends itself to the to the lost the lost soul characters that Winsome is portraying in Mules, um, and I also discovered that so uh, basically I'd like to give a little shout out to um, a wonderful designer that I interacted with when I first came up with this concept. Um, he uses he or they pronouns and I cut names. Um, I'm not entirely sure if I pronounce correctly uh but we spoke quite we were just really on the same page and uh we spoke quite heavily about how like what are the what is going on in the world at the moment that links to this play and it's not it's obviously not been performed since 1996 but the windrush scandal has just come back into light and there's also this year um Scot scotland and um uh the national hiv an AIDS day in Jamaica has just partnered so we we thought when we were talking about color schemes and stuff like that the colors of the Jamaican flag as well as like the red with uh, Bridie's lipstick and the different colors that the actors will bring to portray the different parts of um the characters we just think is like just such a, a great amalgamation of what it's like to be part of the queer community it's just you know it's multicolored and it's multifaceted and we all have parts of ourselves that we bring to different situations and as and like as a result of that we just have this enormous family family um so yeah i mean we so we spoke quite um we spoke a lot about the motion of changing characters being a shared experience between the audience and the performers um in the fir in the first instance that would talk about the review that i think they spoke about penny pinching and the costumes were like qu were quickly shoved on and off um and so in the first instance that would remove that aspect because the audience would be a part of it so it wouldn't feel like they were hiding the fact that they were changing characters it's very kind of communal and the audience is a part of every single aspect of these actors whilst they're on stage um, which I think is like quite an intimate touch that's nice um, and it's also I I was thinking about a song that I heard uh, continuously when I was growing up called Batty Man for Dead and the homophobia that is in Jamaican dance hall soul music is just rife it's rife so I was thinking about that song and I was just like I, lo I love a subversion loves a juxtaposition so I was thinking in the in changes there would be a juxtaposition of some northern soul music that is you know it's just like it like plagues my head at the fact that i used to sing along to this um but that is like that is not only kind of geographically placing where we are but it's also like this music still played it's still it's still one of the most popular songs in jamaica um 
and it just kind of it brings it into contemporary context so i'd quite i'd like to use that along with um alongside some of the negative portrayals of trans people in the media um she who not she who should not be named as a quick example um but yeah i'd like so i'd like to kind of to merge those two together to create this kind of like cacophony of of beats with words that you can hardly really hear those will be played throughout the the scene changes kind of like um kind of like how they portrayed uh the kind of international black communities in like barbershop chronicles that type of like just very kind of rhythmic and earthy and close to the ground that's that's the kind of image that i'm going for um so an another idea that emerged from that was like who are you getting ready for in the morning i wanted to again play with the idea that trans women have to conform to certain beauty standards in order to exist as a woman um but also to talk about people that are more fluid in their appreciation of gender because that i think i mean i think that we are starting to see more people that that can that can really express themselves in this within our communities but at the same time it's still you know there are still a lot of people that are seen as being taboo and that's just not that's just not right i think we are in big old 2020 we've been going through a pandemic i think that it's time when theaters reopen to show the world who is living in it um and i think that if we can show that in theater then hopefully there'll be some some ter turf somewhere that goes to watch that and maybe changes their opinion um so yes i'm just sorry i went off on a, went off on a little bit of tangent getting a little bit annoyed with the state of the world but we have theater and we are creative so we can do our voices um which is what i'm sure we're all as soon as theatres reopen again um but to get back to to the play um so i was planning on sharing a picture in the comments whether i can still do this is another is another issue um so i can do it on instagram um and I'm going to see whether I can do it on Facebook. Uh, sorry, bear with. Do, do, do. Okay, so I've shared it on Instagram. Um, if anyone's watching on both, then you can go. But it's basically just it's basically just my idea for uh, the staging. Um, so I mentioned it was in the round and on the floor. I'd like to have uh, not only dust, but like in the entrances, I'd like to have like pictures and newspapers and just like newspaper clippings. Um, think the like a lamppost in New York that's just over list like missing posters and stuff like that. So I'd like to have that on the floor. Um, and basically when the the final time that each actor plays a character so say the final time uh clary perkins plays bridie when she's changing out of of this character she produces a picture of herself from somewhere and she just places it on the floor and it becomes it becomes at one with the dust and that's also a, a little nod to the disproportionate rate that uh, black trans women trans women but black trans women specifically are killed um all over the world it's i mean it's it's something that has yet again been actively erased from our media uh, portrayals and i think that these negative portrayals of trans women and uh, the queer community on social media they are you know there's there's some there's a massive portion of think about like the fact that we are human beings <laughs> like um that's left out so i think i think that um that will be a nice kind of nod that maybe not everyone will notice but it'll be underneath i quite like to do images that are that i only know about and then maybe some like one person will ask me at the end uh and then i'll and then i'll be able to go off on a massive tangent about something that i obsessed over for weeks um but yeah so that's so that's the staging um and i had envisioned it as a 
probably similar size to uh, Traff One or um, the Orange Tree Theatre or uh, the Minerva Theatre in Chichester, part of the uh, part of Chichester Festival Theatre. Um, so quite an intimate space, but still with enough size to be able to blast music really, um, and it not feel like really overwhelming. Um, but yeah, I think. I think that's everything that I wanted to say. Um, I'm just going to look over my notes so I didn't really look at. Um, mm -mm -mm. Yeah, I think that's all. I apologise. My brain goes at about 400 miles an hour. Um, and then I feel like I've forgotten really important things. But I believe that's everything. Does anyone have any questions? I hope you've heard all of that, actually, with um, my outdoor office, as we'll call it. Hmm. Well, anyway, I uh, would just like to thank the King's Head for inviting me. Um, and uh, also like a special shout out to Shadi, who has been organising all of KHT online. Um, she's amazing. And uh, there, you know, I mean, like you just go onto our Facebook or Instagram um, or our website and the program for KHT online is uh, posted and it's updated with loads of really exciting people every week. I'm not saying that I'm exciting, but there are very exciting people that are on. Um, so, yeah, and hopefully um, we'll see you soon at some point. Um, and I hope everyone is keeping safe and well and trying to stay as positive as possible uh, and watching loads of, like, Shit's Creek or something just to laugh. Um, but, yes, anyway, I will... No, do you want me to just get it on? See if I can turn it off? Um...